Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, I have a very special video, and I know I've been saying this a lot lately that I have a very special video, but a lot of this is due to the uh, kindness and, um, you know, just the outpouring of, um, uh, you know, support that you guys have really given me. And I do feel the support from, you know, the subscribers of my very small but passionate channel. Um, and that is shown in another subscriber. This is sent to me by um, a guy whose username is uh, Jonathan.B.Swift. You'll see him on Eugene's streams. Uh, he very graciously sent me a package that included a very rare fragrance. Um, actually, only 100 bottles of this fragrance were made, and then it was discontinued. It's by the um, Precious House of Arige Ladore. And this is called Siberian Musk. And um, I added the label so I would be able to identify it, although there's no way you would be able to not identify this fragrance. Oh, God, this is such a special fragrance. So, um, a couple things before we get started. This is an early impression video. First impressions video, I call them early impressions. Um, I don't like to just spray it on and smell because I don't feel like you really get very much sometimes in the first couple minutes, especially when your nose is getting used to something. Um, so I like to at least wear it for a few hours before I give you my take. So I've had this on now for four hours. I was going to do a fresh spray like I usually do for you guys so I could compare. But honestly, there's no need. Um, I can tell that this is one of the most... Um, amazing fragrances I've ever smelled in my journey and you know if you're not a real frag head you might look at this and say why are you reviewing a fragrance that came out in 2017 that only 100 bottles were made for the entire world um, you know I'll never be able to smell this fragrance or get my hands on it or anything like that well this video is more about musk the real deer musk, which is so rare, so precious nowadays. It's nothing like the synthetic musks that you smell. You, you've seen some of my collection. You've seen the vintages. I have fragrances from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It doesn't matter. You know, the, the synthetic musks, even the better quality ones from the old days, have nothing on the real thing. Now, um, so a couple things. Number one, Russian Adam, the perfumer. So, You've probably heard in my other video that I prefer um, the house of uh, Bortnikov, and I do, by a wide margin, actually. I own uh, exactly zero bottles of Arige Ladore's work. Um, a couple reasons for that. Availability is number one. But number two, I feel like he's kind of gone downhill, and I'm not saying that to bash him by any stretch of the imagination, but I feel like... He's kind of went down this rabbit hole of, I only want to use natural ingredients. And, um, you know, I feel like his collections as they've gone on have gotten worse. Okay. Uh, from, from the small sampling that I've done, um, I don't by any stretch of the imagination call myself an expert. There may be some amazing things out there from his third, fourth, fifth collection, whatever it may be. Uh, I don't know, but this is from the very first collection where he released this, um, and he released um, a fragrance called Ottoman Empire, the first one, the original one in 2017, with this as well. So I feel like he did his best work early on. So there was then obviously a Siberian Musk 2 and a Siberian Musk 3 and so forth and so on. I don't know how many of these there are, but each one is, is a little bit different. Um, a little bit uh, different because obviously the ingredients are, are limited. It's a limited run and, and that's that. So this actually comes from the Siberian musk deer. Uh, there are some deer that it is illegal to actually get musk from. One of them is the Kashmiri musk deer. Um, and you know, those are the deer that have those fangs that actually scratch the forest floor when they're trying to up, you know, dig up roots and stuff like that to eat. Um, they're trying to scratch the forest lichens or whatever it may be. Um, so this is the Siberian musk deer. And I just want to show you, uh, I have some experience with natural musk perfumes. I will show you this Bortnikov real quick. 
This is Bortnikov's Musk Habib. And Musk Habib uh, uses real deer musk. And um, Russian Adam and Bortnikov went into business before each founding their own brand. So Russian Adam founded Ariz Ladore and, um, you know, Bortnikov founded the House of Bortnikov. But before that, they created a venture that was an oud distilling service called Feel Oud. So they founded Feel Oud. They both own it. Um, and then they use that natural oud distilling service to then share their beautiful creations with the world. And then from that natural oud became, came to natural musk. Now, I will tell you, um, from smelling natural musk, uh, in fragrances like this, there is one misconception that you have to kind of get off of your chest right away. Everyone thinks that, you know, because it's natural musk, compared to synthetic musk, that it's just going to be an absolute beast. That's not true at all. Um, it is much more animalic. Uh, you know, it, it has much more depth. It has a different smell. It has this strange sparkly type smell to it. But um, it's not a beast. It doesn't reach out and touch someone across the room like synthetics do. It actually is one of the most beautiful, soft smells that you will smell. It doesn't go past an arm length, maybe even half an arm length. But if somebody gets close to you, you can bet your bottom dollar that that they will smell you. Now, there's one other animalic perfume that I found that I immediately went out and bought a backup uh, travel atomizer of. And it's my favorite um, animalic, natural animalic fragrance I've ever smelled. I'll talk about it whenever I do an animalic uh, fragrance, but it's from the house of uh, TSVGA Parfums or I don't know if you pronounce that TSVGA or Zvuga, or I don't know how you're expected to say that. Uh, but um, TSVGA is a uh, indie house created by a perfumer named James Barry. He's a young kid chasing his dream. Uh, but he has created something amazing with this fragrance called Fiona. Um, this fragrance has everything. It has the natural deer musk, but it also has skunk pod. It has, you know, the high high racium. Uh, that's the dried fecal matter of hyrax. Uh, it has black and white ambergris. It has real civet. It has um, real castorium pods. It has um, four kind of ouds. I mean, it, anything stinky you can think of is in here. And it's amazing. It's the most amazing animalic fragrance I've ever gotten my nose on. Um... Oh, God, it's so good. Um, I probably should have bought a full bottle of this, but whatever. Um, I'm glad to have a backup travel atomizer. So I, I say all this to say that I do have some experience with natural musk compared to uh, the synthetic musks that we are that we're used to smelling. Let me tell you what I get from from this fragrance. So first of all, um, let me just give you the composition breakdown. Um, let me just give you the composition breakdown according to, um, Parfumo.net. Um, and so this, this came out in 2017. Like I said, the, the top notes are Italian bergamot, lime, Indian mandarin orange, Siberian stone pine, uh, which sounds like something the deer might eat, exotic fruits and citruses. And when you first spray... You do get this bright citrus and fruit that instantly mixes with the natural musk. And the natural musk gives off this kaleidoscope type effect, right? So the natural musk, the natural deer musk here is almost instantly recognizable. Um, and it, it, it gives off this kaleidoscope effect because what it smells like is when you initially spray, it smells a little bit like ammonia. You know how when you have a cat like a male cat in heat and they piss on everything and it gives off that urine ammonia smell. You get that at the very beginning of, you know, when you first spray the initial blast. But then as it starts to dry, it brings in this beautiful warmth. Um, and if, if you know anything about the deer musk pods, what they're to be used for, the male deer actually, you know, um, sent their territory 
and they sent it for two reasons. They sent it, number one, to warn off other males that this is my territory, and they sent it, number two, to attract females, right? And so the scent is, um, uh, it, it's created by the uh, deer, by the pod, and I believe the urine actually goes through the pod, so when they urinate on something, it gives off a little bit of that stench, but there's also some sort of droppings that come out of the pod itself. And in the old days, when the when the musk deers were much more prominent before we basically hunted them to extinction, um, you know, you could actually pick up these little droppings and create a fragrance out of that. Now people are killing the male musk deer to get to the actual uh, pod itself. Now, to be fair, I saw a video from Arise Ladori that said, Russian Adam said that one pod can basically make like a hundred bottles. So one deer was killed in, in his creation of this and they used it for other, you know, parts. The, the meat was used, the, you know, all the different parts of the deer, the hoofs were used, all the different parts of the deer were used. Um, nothing goes to waste basically. Um, and there's, there's legal ways of doing this. You know, there are hunters that are given a certain amount of tags. They can kill a certain amount of deer per year and all this stuff. So it's not the endangered Kashmiri musk deer that I was talking about earlier. This is the Siberian musk deer. Um, and so it's obtained legally, but the, the closest, um, the closest natural ingredient that I could actually compare this to is ambergris, not because of the way that they smell. They smell completely different, but because of what they do to the composition, uh, the fragrance composition, I, I mentioned in um, my Lesson Demo Dabla's uh, video on Ombre Supreme that ambergris almost shines this spotlight on the other ingredients. And musk does something similar in, in a sense, in that it kind of shines a spotlight, but musk takes over the composition much more. So ambergris to me, a lot of times kind of sits in the background and the other ingredients do the main work. With, with, a, with a composition with natural musk, um, it is very hard for a perfumer to make something like this and not overdo it, to kind of balance it, to walk that line. Because if it's too musky, um, you know, it's going to, it's going to instantly put you off because this is a very, this is a very strong smell. Um, this is expertly blended with some other material like Aust Australian sandalwood, blue cypress, there's spices, there's galbanum, there's orange blossom, beautiful orange blossom in this. But the musk itself to me actually comes off, like I said earlier, it's like a kaleidoscope. So the musk itself will sometimes feel floral. It'll feel like it has citrus qualities. Um, it, I get this, um, I almost get this like old root smell. Like, um, you know, if you ever like stuck a shovel into an area with a lot of, a lot of uh, small tree roots and plant roots and stuff like that, and you pull up the, the, the roots and you get that instant smell. Um, it almost has this old root smell, like you pulled them out and then you kind of let them sit for a while in the sun. But it, it, it does, it does something interesting to, to, you know, a composition. It, it's so hard to describe natural musk because this is such a beautiful composition. There's, there's also this patchouli aspect to it to my nose, even though I don't think patchouli is, oh yeah, patchouli is listed as a base note. I didn't think patchouli was listed as a base note. Um, but it, it feels like, you know, how, you, when, you know, when you walk into like a head shop, right? And you get that heavy patchouli smell. It feels a bit like there is this earthy, rooty patchouli smell. And if you've ever seen them, you can go to YouTube and kind of look up the uh, musk pod being cut open and the contents being scraped out, and it even looks like um, soil. So whenever they cut open that musk pod, it, it looks like uh, it looks like this earthy, rooty soil type uh, type um, ingredient. Um, 
So obviously it is um, unfortunate that they have to kill the male deer for this, obviously. Uh, it, it, but it is such a pleasure and such a treat to be able to try a composition like this. I wish I had a full bottle. Um, you know, it um, it's something that never becomes cloying. I think I could wear this all year round, even in the heat. Um, so the musk adds this warmth to the composition, uh, but there's also this bitterness. So I mentioned that, so maybe I didn't mention it, but the biggest thing with the natural musk is that there's this natural sweetness that you get from smelling the composition. It, it There is a sweetness, but if you've watched some of my other videos, I've mentioned that I actually don't like sweet fragrances a lot of times. This is completely different. Um, there is nothing that uh, I, I smell in any of these natural musk compositions where I go, oh wow, that is that is just way too sweet because... The natural musk has a sweet smell, but it's like it's almost like because it's coming from nature, it's properly balanced. So it's sweet. It has a natural sweetness to the musk, but it's never overbearing. It's never cloying. And then because it's this kaleidoscope, because it's so uh, it's ever changing. The the musk, the real deer musk that you smell. Even though I said it's sweet, it has this bitter quality. Even though I said that it dominates the composition, it also shines a light on some of these other things. So it, so the Australian sandalwood smells different. The cypress. Uh, there's, there's also Indian vetiver and um, amber in the base here, and there's a little bit of his oud. But I never would have, uh, I never would have known that there's oud in this composition if I wasn't reading it off of Parfumo.net. Um, I would think this is a pure musk composition. And so that is something else to mention. Not that this is going to be a comparison video, but uh, Bortnikoff's Musk Khabib. Bortnikoff to me is like a master at some of these other floral elements around the composition. Uh, and so here, I really think that musk is part of a bigger composition, uh, part of a, of a larger drawing a larger picture if you will even though the musk is natural and beautiful and you can you can smell that natural sparkle it has this sparkle uh and it brings people closer to you um they they probably have never smelled anything like this and this does something similar the siberian musk but I feel like Arij Ladori actually did Russian Adam actually did a better job here of highlighting the musk itself. So to me, this feels like a musk centric composition, like the musk is the center of the universe in this in this composition. Whereas here, even though it's natural deer musk and it's beautiful, it's part of you know Bortnikov's um, overall DNA, and there are some pieces of his DNA in this fragrance. Uh, I think there is that beautiful lotus flower. Um, you know, he is very well known for using um, for using these uh, these florals that are very tough to work with. They usually don't see other perfumers use very very well, and he uses them in this as well. Whereas here, Russian Adam, there's obviously a lot else going on. I mentioned the fruits. I mentioned the citrus. I mentioned the woods. Um, there's Australian sandalwood. There's galbanum, there's patchouli, there's cypress, but musk is the center of the universe here. And one of the most beautiful musks I've ever smelled. Even though this is my favorite animalic, natural animalic fragrance, this has so much else going on. It's got the civet, castorium, hyrax, uh, ambergris. I'll do an animalic, favorite animalic videos one day soon. And, and, you know, if you've watched this video, you know this will be number one, hands down. Um, the only other animalic fragrance that I can think of that comes close to this would be Koros, but Koros doesn't have the naturals that this has. It's still a synthetic composition, just as far as pure animalic love for me. Um, but, but this is, is something that, you know, I never would have had a chance to smell if not for the graciousness of the community. 
And so it's very hard to describe something like this because you want to just say, well, it smells musky, but it doesn't smell like any musk you've ever smelled if you've only smelled synthetic musks is the problem. So it has that animalic side, um, definitely has that animalic side. It smells a little bit like, um, you know, it smells a little bit like there's some, there, there's this uh, cat piss accord sometimes, but then you smell it and it changes and it goes to, you know, something sweet and it goes to something that draws you in and then you smell it and it's bitter and, you know, it's rooty and it's vegetal and it's, now that could be some of the Indian vetiver mixing with the musk, but, um, it has this amazing softness to it. So it's just, a, it's just, it's so hard to explain. The only word that I can think of that I keep coming back to is kaleidoscope. Natural musk has this kaleidoscope type effect where it, it does all these different things. There's all these different moving parts, uh, but the natural musk does something in a way where, you know, if, if natural musk is meant to attract female deer, does it also have an effect on the human mind, right? Does it, whether, no matter the sex, does, does it also have some sort of effect? I don't know, but I can tell you that smelling this, it's unlike any other musk fragrance I've ever smelled. And, um, you know, this is, um, this is such a treat, especially with only a hundred bottles made. Um, this is, um, an honor. This is a very contemplative, uh, fragrance too, as well. It puts me in a very like meditative state when you smell this musk. Um, you know, if you wanted to, not that I go to church very often, but if you, if I was going to go to church and sit and pray for an hour this is the kind of fragrance I would want to wear. This or something like, you know, with the beautiful sandalwood accord, if I had some natural Mysore sandalwood, they're in the same ballpark, if that makes sense. Um, and nowadays, excuse me, with IFRA and all the stuff that's going on, um, it is really outside of the mainstream to get to smell something like this. So I'm not making this, this first impression because I expect you to go out there and be able to get something like this right away. You know, if you're watching this because you want to go buy this, good luck. I mean, you're going to you're going to spend big big money to find a bottle of this. If there is someone on eBay, they're probably asking thousands. I didn't look, but um, you know, with only a, it's just a supply and demand issue, especially the original from 2017. Uh, and so I'm not making this with the intention of you going out and buying this particular product, but I'm making this just to show you guys um, you know, number one, how generous some of the people in the community are because, um, Eddie, thank you very much. I mean, you have no idea, uh, how much this means to be able to just smell, just experience something like this. Um, and then number two, if you ever do get a chance to smell a natural musk fragrance, the Bortnikoffs are much more accessible. A Rige Ladore went very limited, you know, hundred bottles, boom, it's out, that's it. Whereas Bortnikoff, I, I like Bortnikoff because he took a little different approach. Um, and even though they are exclusive, they're not so exclusive that you can't go find it. And, um, you know, between the two, I think I like this one just a little bit more because of what it does around the, the natural musk itself. Um, but, uh, but this Bortnikoff composition, Musk Habib, if you want a natural musk and you don't want to, and you can't find a bottle of something like this, which you wouldn't be able to, I would highly recommend checking out the, the Bortnikov. So I know I'm kind of rambling here. Um, there were so many things that I kind of wanted to, uh, to touch on. And, you know, at, on these early impression videos, um, I just want to give you guys as much information as I can, because this is the kind of stuff that I you know, would have been doing anyway before I had my channel. Now, I wouldn't have had someone send this to me. Um, so there is a plus there. This is something a little different because of the channel. Uh, but I, I used to get new compositions and try them all the time, and I would just kind of enjoy them with myself. So now I'm trying to share the information with you guys. So um, if you have any experience with Real Musk, I would love to hear your comments down below. 
Um, you know, I would um, I would welcome if anyone else has smelled this, if they get a similar kaleidoscope scent profile where it smells all these different things. Uh, and again, this is a first impression, but there's I will cherish uh, this juice. I'm not gonna I'm gonna take good care of it so I can try it again later on as well. Look at the color too. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, look at that. So this is um, this is real fraghead content here. This is not something that I think is going to get clicked on by, you know, a million bros looking for Aventus. So this is just something that I wanted to share another first impression with you guys. I did one from D.L. Qualia uh, on La Oscar from Rosa, Roja. I did one from Rich Mitch yesterday uh, on Eau Noir. And today from Eddie uh, Jomathan B dot b dot swift is his is his uh, user id across all platforms i think um so uh eddie if you want to give me your breakdown of this i'll pin it to the top of the video and i hope you guys have enjoyed my initial impressions on siberian musk it was an absolute honor seriously absolute honor to try this so thank you my friend and um i'll be back with another video tomorrow cheers have a great day